up, everybody? Uh, this is Wadey G from the G-List Society. Welcome to my very, 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 very first um, video chat interview. I've been dying to do these for a while, so I said, hey, I got this perfect opportunity to start, and we're going to make it happen. Um, meet my special guest, Will Sheridan. He is Hi, a, guys. <laughs> hey. He's a um, hip hop, um, I mean, hip hop icon in the LGBT community. Um, oh, he's wow. also an yes. athlete. I mean, dude, people been giving you props, so I think your icon status. And <laughs> I mean, for sure. And then he's an athlete, great basketball player. Um, you may know him uh, um, when he came out in 2011 or 2012. Um, 20 something. Okay. 2011. 2011. Um, after he played for top ranking school, Villanova, as well as um, being an activist and just a all around Renaissance man. I mean, he's here to entertain. Oh, so, I mean, you, and he's doing a great job. What's up, Will? Hi. What's up? Excuse my nasally. I'm a little congested right now. I got to clear that up before I get on stage tonight. It's, we in Austin, Texas. Giant. Let's go. That's right. Giant <laughs> is doing big things up in Texas. And um, you're doing a festival out there. Can you tell me more about this festival you're doing? Yeah, I'm here for the Outlander Music Festival. Um, I think they, they do a uh, spring and a summer fall music festival. I did the spring one at their South by South for West event. And they invited me down to uh, perform with some great acts. I'm looking at this bill like, how am I closing? Nakia, really? From The Voice? I work with Cena? Word. What? Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, well, he's then, on the bill, too. I'm like, God. Your headliner um, status, bro. Your headliner status. I don't know, though. But uh, we're going to turn it out. But tonight, we're going to do All Can Harry's. Um, you know, I'm an ever grinding, ever pushing for more opportunities type of artist, as we shouldn't be all the time. Excuse me, that was gross. And I, uh, <laughs> I, um, I hit them up, and they they brought me in. I hit in a couple of venues, hit up a couple of venues about, about performing the Friday that I get down here, and uh, they uh, basically brought me in to do their happy hour event. Like you know, it's good. It's, this is good for hip hop. Shit, it's not a drag queen this time. Shit. Exactly. Um, and you know what? That's I, a question. I got my I, hair did. <laughs> I see. Going. I love the wee pieces. <laughs> I was, I was teasing you. I don't know if you heard this me. This is bigger. Okay, whatever. No, that's that's some giant. Um, it's clean up. Oh wow! Wait a minute. So you didn't even start all the my way hair at the top? My, no, no, no. This is this is me regular. But you kept the um, shag in the back. I see. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I have a shag. Yes, you got that. And then we braided it up. It's oh, a good balance. Right. What color is that in there? Is that gold? Uh, it's black. I mean, it's just regular hair color, but then my, um, I, I, I freaking ran out of it. put some blonde in there. <laughs> oh, yes. All right. Yeah, all the way hood. <laughs> That's right. I mean, that, you know what? I was just talking about, I don't know if you watch R&B Divas, but that, those two braids reminded me of Little Mo back in the day when she first came out. Baby, be a super Oh my god, it's That's always fun funny. chatting with you. This is such a Yeah, we really interview. kick it though. We really kick it like on some regular. So I yes, like that. So, so um yes. so, so we we gotta talk about this brand new mixtape that I've been tweeting a little bit probably excessively. People probably like, Okay, okay. what is this damn mixtape he's um uh, promoting <laughs> and okay Thank you. He talking about power bottoms and all of this stuff. It's painless and your anus bang them like a power, power bottom. bottom. Bang ah! like a power bottom. Bang like a power, power bottom. Bang. And you know what? We're going to talk about that track. We're going to talk about that track in a minute because it, I'm usually not a person who could recite um, words and stuff when I hear a song. That, like It probably <laughs> takes me like 20 or 30 times. I got that chorus down like after the second or third listen. Because that, that was straight off the hook. But you have a brand new mixtape called SOAP. And it's um it's an Soap. acronym called, uh, stands for? Sex, sex on a platter, no talk, no strings, no ch chatter. Sex on a platter. No, you know what it started with is um I'm a big fan of The Christmas Story. I watched it 24 hours on Christmas Day. I like, really love that movie. You know the part when um the mom was like, um, Ralphie, you have to wash your mouth off for talking like that. I'm like, you know what? I'm rapping like I never rapped before about content that I've never rapped before for the fans, um, basically, who 
pushed me kind of like to just, you know, expand my horizons and my peers who, who challenged me to really expand my horizons as well. Shout out to Big Mama from Florida. Yeah. Um, and I basically, um, I basically did that and, um, you know, Sex on the Platter just came out and then we put together this, this, this cover art. Which is Super. hot. Love and, it. And it's very it's I, up, soap down. Very, I, first of all, how your yeah. six foot eight uh, ass fit in the foot in the in the bathtub anyway? So you no, know I can legs, talk to you like that. Yeah. So <laughs> my legs, my legs are sticking out. Um, yes, it's supposed but, to be like art, so I got Tim's on. It's not very realistic, but um. I mean, you know, and that's you know, what I really like about it. It's artistic, but sexy as hell, and artistic <laughs> but sexy as hell. I said, damn, I'm gonna have to put a ring on that shit. But um, but I mean, what what caused you to do that? Because like you said, I mean, this is like a brand new Will Sheridan, or not? I wouldn't say brand new because we all have different sides to us. This is a side that has yet to be exposed, and you said the fans really encouraged you to do that. Can you elaborate on that? Um, I really wanted to uh, basically track thirteen, I believe, on no, that's that's my fucking with a giant. I think it's track. 10 or 11 on Giant is what's your function and um, live people just really love that that song and um, I kind of expanded upon that. I did a feature for Big Mama um, on his song Holy Water and um, he was like, you know, I want you to pull your dick out on this one. I'm like, what you talking about? I'm like, oh, I'm rapper. Like, I, rap, I got it. He was like, no, but like really get crazy with it and like get nasty. And so I was like, dick, 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 got a lot of dick, make the baddest bitches bust it down and swallow it. I'm a god, I'm a giant, you a giant trick. Blow me proper, blow me sloppy, do you copy, bitch? G2 got that juice on deck, no preservatives, I'm in the face fucking bukkake, mmm, perverted shit. Oh. And he was like, ah! And I was like, alright, cool. You shocked so the hell out of him. Right? So once, like, I'm like, because, you know, I'm set fire to the streets, fighting for equality, you know, talking about being deaf with minorities, bully bulliers. I'm, I really got a message. But, you know, I think that my audience, you know, I've been giving them that for a minute, and I think they wanted a little bit something different. And and also, I wanted to give a little bit something different. So um, Soap is a, good, is a good package. It's a good project that I probably will revisit, like, it's under the umbrella of giant because if you're going in and never timid, if you're big enough to be who you are all the time, you're a giant too, then you're going to be sexy sometimes. You're going to be outrageous sometimes. And I know, you know, the streets need that from me. Um, and so that's where Soap came from, from basically. Um, you know, I, I partnered up with Carvo, my in-house producer from a Forever Original. Um, Laurent did the title track, DJ Laurent. Shout out to DJ Laurent. He did Soap. Um, and then Good Goose did um, Body Me, and we put six tracks together. We had a bunch of other ones, and we just wanted to keep it real short, real concise, free. Download. You can go on my SoundCloud, um, Will Share the Music, or my Facebook page, Will Share the Music, or on that piff, um, Will Share the Put that in. So it's all free downloads. I just want, I want to feed the kids that come to all my shows. You know, they support me. They, you know, my Kickstarter's about to be up. They, they give me all that. We got three projects coming out. So, Hello Yellow Brick Road, which is an old town, John, and then um, Saints and Giants, which is a collaboration between me and DJ Laurent. And basically, we just want to flood the streets to free music before we work on this third album. I mean, the second album and really get it popping. I'm really serious about my music. Um, I feel like a father to these kids that rap now. Like I'd be like, oh, that's what she's talking about. Oh, okay, I did that. Mm -hmm. So soap, soap is popping. Soap is where soap, we at right now. Yeah, soap is def definitely popping. And um, want to get into the tracks real quick because um, first, I just want to compliment you on the production. And you gave shout out, oh, shout out to all the people who gave you productions because it is um, what I call like that new school. New York hip hop sound that people uh -huh. are like glad that it's coming back is it, it contains some of the elements of the '90s hip hop, but it's definitely a much much fresher sound, and in it's hard for me to explain it because um I was sharing it with um, one of my buddies and asked him to give me his take on it, 
and he said, um, you know, lyrically, you're like off the chain. And then the beats, it kind of reminded him of like what Kanye West did with like my Twisted Dark Fantasy and the Yeezus album. Oh, wow. Right. Thank you. So, and I said, you know what? That's what I was kind of thinking of. And um, my other album that I like that has similar, or not similar beats, but beats that are that creative is um, Diddy's Last Train to Paris. So oh, was uh, that part of your concept when you put Soap together as far as like the creative level? Yeah, well, Soap started with um, the first track that we did was Make It Nasty. Um, and I did that. I laid that down. And then I sent that to um, two of my good friends. One is an aspiring artist um, at Three X's. And... Um, you know, we really worked on that verse to just get it right so he could close out the track and Reindeer. And mind you, these two are both um, teammates of mine on my um, my A, not my AU team, my traveling team, uh, the Rock Dogs. Um, and then Miss Reindeer put his verse down, then uh, 3X put his verse down, and we got it popping. That song was actually inspired by a lot of um, a lot of um, music that I hear in the strip clubs. Um, and then we just took it and made it very Will Sheridan because I'd be like, killer, you're such a fucking killer. <laughs> like, and I'm sick. So, like, that type of stuff was recorded. And I really wanted to get, like, raw recording experiences. That's why I was talking on the mixtape more than I did on, like, the album. Mm -hmm. um, then we hit up with Soap. That was the title track. I really was invested in trying to do that. Um, and then, like, we just showing in the um, studio, and I was like, it's painless in your anus, bang them like a power bottle. Wow. And um, I had already had this hat made, P-W-R-B-T-T, and, um, and people love that hat. Like, they, they want me to make it all the time, so I make it for them or whatever with my people who make my hats and stuff. Oh, you got to make me one, too. Like, I actually, you want to know what I did? You want a soap hat or you want a power bottom hat? Wait, what was the first one? You want a soap hat or you want a power bottom hat? I want both. Because <laughs> I you love would. sacks on the platter, but and I ain't gonna I, talk about the power bottom thing, not not live. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> I ain't gonna talk about the power bottom thing live. Ah, uh, nah, nah, nah. This is about you. This ain't so, about me. I just create lives for other people to live in. You know, it's it's not about how you actually are. It's about what you're comfortable with. Exactly, you... because um, one of well, I mean, I'll ask this question. Um, that who was it that sent it to me? Oh, shit. Where did my paper go? Oh, Don from D.C. asked me because, um, I, oh, shout out to everybody who sent me questions to shout ask to Will, you. especially this was at the last minute, so I was surprised at the responses that I got. But Don from D.C. wanted to ask, um, are you, hold on, let me ask you. So are the lyrics in all the songs in Soap true to life? Your life, I guess. And so the actual project or project mm. or the song? The yeah, the all song the songs. Or the the, yeah, the project um, all the songs. I think I embellish a little bit, but like, I know you wanna fillet me in the sauna, fuck me like a sauna, blow me like that marijuana. That's real. Like, I go, you know, I, I go to gym and then I walk around my town and they be like, they be giving me that stare, and I'm like, I know you wanna, I, like, I know you want this, but like, um, and then like what, power bottom? I'm like, you know, if you pitch a tent, sir, I won't keep you, I won't give you camp. No, like when I'm having sex, I'm a grown man. I'm not, I'm not giving you no like girliness. I mean, that's just not me. And it's a turn off for me. Do what two men are supposed to do, right? I just do what I do. So, um. I would say it's about it's it's more honest and more real than any other hip hop album out there. How about that? Because a lot of these people be talking about all the stuff they do, but they don't really do it. Like oh. I'm like, you see me in my jock strap, hairy ass poking. You better break me off. No laughing or joking. You play pitcher and I play catcher. You're looking quite delicious, so I might let ya. Look at three X's. He right behind you. What's up, three X's? <laughs> Hey, what's up? Get in there real quick. Triple X. Triple X. Triple X. Triple X <laughs> so I mean, and, um, because um, you brought up a very couple good, couple of good points, I wanted to um touch on in that last statement you said. But real quick, um, 
because you decided to do this album mainly for the fans, and this is different from what we heard with Giant and previous um, efforts that you have done, um, was there any hesitation at first? Because to me, just based on the answers you have given so far, it seems like when you're challenged to do something, you'd be like, hey, ain't no thing. Or were you a bit hesitant at first? You know what's so funny is that um, I like to I like to point out and he doesn't necessarily like that I pointed out, but my in-house producer Carbo is very straight, right? And I'm very gay. There's <laughs> just no getting around. It. Like, <laughs> he likes girls and I like boys. So, right. well, he likes girls and I like men. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, what's really funny about the whole situation is like I. When I started, I was like, oh, well, this is just going to be for my fans. But then, like, people that, first of all, I'm, I'm in a studio, and it's generally, like, a bunch of straight dudes hanging out with Carvel, whatever, just listening. And I was like, when I first started with that first verse, bitch, let me suck that dick. I'm open. Yeah, I'm talking daddy pipe smoking. I'm seeing you in a jock strap, heavy ass poking. You better, like, all that. The, the content is so far left but the delivery is so boy that i could take it anywhere i really don't i'm really confident about the delivery about my lyrics i mean i think i think power bottom pwr bwtm with big dipper and big mama is one of the best collaborations ever between gay artists i mean whether i have to agree big artists we're talking about big artists indie artists whatever the fact that these three powers came together you know, a superstar in Florida, a superstar in Chicago, me from New York. It's just, it's crazy. And like all three of our verses is different. All three of our verses is crazy sickening. It's just like, I can't be ashamed of this music. I have to love it. I, I mean, I'm so proud of this project. So, I mean, when I, like, I, the only hesitation I had was like, when my mom, when I go home, which is rare to Delaware, my mom, Josie, is like, she hears where your new music? music? She's like, what's your new music? Let me hear it. And she'd be on me. So I played it, and she was like, I like this. This is cute. And then, like, you know, we just heard her. <laughs> All well, right, for a supportive mama. You know, you know, it took a long time to get to that point, but she sees me growing. Right. And into this and it's all of, yes. Now, is that a suite you're staying in, or is that a house? I'm, um, I'm at, you know, what's funny is um, I play on the Rock Dogs, and I have to give credit to, um, Alex Herrera, who is the starter and founder of Rock Dogs, who put, um, who suggested that I, you know, collaborate with some of, with one of the other artists that's on the team, um, Miss Reindeer, because he's developing his sound. And he's he's early on, and but we basically do some of the same stuff. I mean, we're different aesthetically. But he was like, oh, you should put him on this track. Da da da. So like, he has some executive pro production credits for Make It Nasty. But um, we're at his house right now. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into his life and all that, but um, right. you doing good, girl? I got that cool back here. Yes. That good? Okay, in that bar, I'm still waiting on my um, uh, Henny and Coke from the bartender. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my crew is in the back chilling. We actually need to rehearse in a little bit before we go over to Old King Harry's just for that final, um, that final walkthrough. But um, yeah, soap is popping. Soap um, is I'm really popping. The free download is out there. Um, you know, we're going to keep plugging that away for like the next month or two. Will month you be and a half. doing any videos for, for the album? Uh, yes. For the we already shot Make It Nasty. We already shot the um, title track, Soap. I really want to do Power Bottom, but I want to do it in a different way. Um, so I'm, I'm talking to a bunch of people right now. But what's funny is um, I really wanted to release this project with um, the video for um what um what more could you want i mean excuse me what's your function mm -hmm. but um a couple things fell through so i didn't want to just rush it and make it whack because like i'm still doing visuals for giant so what we're going to do is after we keep we get done promoting the soap visuals and that packaging we're going to come out with haters which is actually a message for the people who don't like soap because you know there's going to be people that don't like it i mean on that piff right now the comments are like get out of here with that faggy shit i'm like well work bitch i'm doing me they probably downloading it too. <laughs> right. They did download it and then they commented. So let me ask um, you this question about um, you know, you you even more uh, you know, like anyway. artists are LGBT or I'm gonna say gay because 
Mm, I can't respect to every hip hop artist, but you know a lot of it. That's right, S O A P, and get it at dapip dot com, and we'll share it in dot com too. But um, you know, talking about um the situation where you've uh, read some of the hate mail in dapip dot com, it's mainly a mainstream or you know a, a full blown hip hop website where people download mixtapes. Um, do you ever feel that one day, and if when? Um, LGBT gay hip hop artists will be accepted by hip hop mainstream, and I'm not talking about, um, you know, like I think Esquire and some other magazines talked about you guys. I'm talking about do you think there'll be a time when Double XL, The Source, and all of those people will really big up talented gay rappers? Yeah, I mean, but like I said before in the past. Um, I think this new generation of rappers who are gay is way better than any gener generation ever. I mean, I really don't think the talent level was there or the exposure or the packaging before. I think now we're operating on a higher level. Um, we're seeking equality. We're, you know, pushing ourselves to a higher level in production levels and recording levels and engineering levels that we can compete with our not homosexual or non you know non community artists. So, I mean, it was our responsibility as artists to take ourselves to the next level. And I, I really do think that um there will be a, you know, double XL freshman. Um what's funny is like I think I deserve it, but I don't necessarily think it's gonna be me, which is fine. I'm a boss. I'm I'm over that. But I think that um there's definitely some young talent out there that deserves to um, be recognized and you know when their time comes they will be recognized and we'll be ready but um it's, it takes people like me and you know a, a, a couple of these other artists that actually are talented and have substance in their music match with aesthetics match with you know knowing your audience knowing what you're doing but actually have a respect for the culture because hip-hop is the narrative of the minority. And if you're thinking about minorities, a minority of a minority, you're looking at it right now. Like, my narrative is hip-hop. Right. So what people don't understand is that we're going to continue to get better. That's why you're going to... And we're going to excel at a high level. That's why you're going to see gays in sports excel, gays in the, you know, corporate world. And, and, and in art, where we, where we dominate behind the scenes, no pun intended... You know, we're going to come to the forefront. Get it popping. I agree with that, too. Um, one of the things I noticed is that you I love your confidence and your um, skills you. and stuff like that. And I feel like it's justified. However, do you have it, have it, has it ever been brought to your attention that it could be like a bit arrogant, especially when you compare yourself to other rappers? I mean, like I said, it's justified. But then I say, Man, I could just hear the comments. Oh, who he think he's all that or something? Well, how would you? No, you know to what? That? To be honest with you, um, I think that sports has exposed character in my life. Um, I I never compare myself. I never compare myself um, in a way that throws shade to other artists because that's just a reflection of your own insecurities. I big up other artists all the time. Shout out to Big Dipper from Chicago. Shout out to Big Mama who's on my shit. Shout out to Cakes the Killer. Shout out to Three X's and Reindeer. That's all my thing. Like, I show mad love. So that's where I humble myself because, like I, like I just said, like, it's not, it probably won't be me as a double XL freshman. It'll be somebody else. But I know what I contribute to the culture. That's why I'm completely confident in my ability. I mean, when it comes to live performance, like, you slay like, live. Hell. I mean, you so definitely like, slay live. Man. So, like, I'm only going to grow as an artist. I've only been doing this for just almost, almost four years. So, like, it's been people that's been really? doing this their whole life. They're whack. And I've been on the other side of things Hallelujah. as well, where, where I've been a journalist. So, I have a different perspective. Um, I have life experiences that people can't really compare to, you know. And I don't, you know, and I don't claim that my life experiences are the same as some hood guy that's going to have those type of life experiences. I just stay in my lane, and then when I'm in my lane and I challenge myself to be the best that I can be, my confidence is at an all-time high. So when people say I'm arrogant, they just don't know me. They just don't know me, and it's fine. I'd rather be, contrib I'd rather be considered arrogant than timid or weak because that's not me. That's true. So when people, say, when people say I'm arrogant, I'm just like, I don't think I'm arrogant, yeah, girl. 
<laughs> that was Alex. Right. Probably. I mean, hey, no shade at all. I mean, like, I, I, I just say, you know, sometimes it's like your confidence may be, um, if you know, may be inferior to other people's, you know, confidence in themselves. So, I, and then I'm glad you addressed it the way that you did because I, I, I say, look, whatever accolades you get, you deserve it. You're a great lyricist and your I'm music, a, huh? Thank you. I'm just saying, like, I, I appreciate you saying that, but, like, I'm just a kid. I'm just a, a, a man from Bear, Delaware. I grew up in a town that has less than, you know, umpteen people. I mean, you had to walk to the lo local Wawa to get milk on a Saturday morning for my mom and, all, like, cornfields and all that. Like, wow. what? Like, I played in the basketball league just like everybody else. Like, I'm just regular. Like, I don't ever try to be anything I'm not. But at the same time, you got to look at my life. Like, I'm in Austin right now. Yeah doing two shows for people who don't know me like i'm and i'm it's a gig too it's not like i'm just here you know what and I mean? let's like, tell people you are in, living in new york so to me i like, mean I'm, for me I'm in brooklyn, right right i mean you, you have I perform for you. brooklyn more i perform in not in brooklyn but in manhattan i perform in new york at least once a month and i'm and and if you want to talk about how humbling i am i i built a house right i built a party and I give the other, I give an opportunity for other artists to perform, like I've five seen or six those a night. Too. Yeah. You know, and it's like I do that, like so. It's not like it's not like I'm just making music and you know going well, let me on. Let ask you this question real quick. Um, now that you said that, you, how you give platforms to other artists? Because I've seen those flyers and stuff. How do you feel? I mean, it's one thing to talk about the reception from hip hop media or hip hop industry. How do you feel about the reception from the LGBT community, um, especially for your career and as well as the platforms that you set up for other people in New York City? Um, I have a, this is a very this is like a paragraph answer because I feel as though um, the LGBT community is put into one category when there's so many different. Um, uh, there's so many different qualities that put each other into different, uh, there's so many different demographics in the LGBT community that contribute to people receiving music differently. So for example, um, I didn't know my audience per se when I first started making music. So I was making music that I wanted Villanova people to listen to and my friends to listen to, but not necessarily like downtown, you know, gay kids that like I was hanging out with. I just didn't have a clue of what they were listening to. So I felt like the reception on my first couple projects were always by straight blogs or straight, you know, straight audiences. And now that I've started throwing parties and I, you know, go to more shows and I've witnessed my peers and my music is evolving, I'm, you know, growing as an artist, I think that the LGBT community is coming towards me, coming to, to me, like, you know, accepting what I do. But at the beginning, I mean, if you think about it, like, I came out on ESPN, I put out an 18-track album, I put out a EP with a single that basically sold gold, if you're talking about new standards. Um... And I wasn't in Out 100. I wasn't in any, you know, I didn't get any write-ups about that. And I just had to fall back and, like, watch them call other people pioneers and things like that. So, you know, my journey is my journey. And I think that I've accepted that, you know, I'm going to always have to grind harder than the average person. Because, A, I have to break down my, my the perception of people thinking or my, you know, what people are projecting onto me just in general then I don't have the luxury of creating this lie about who I am because I played sports. You can Wikipedia when I was born, where I was born, how old I am, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, my music started as such a humble experience that I should just put it out. Like, The Will to Win had 1,200 downloads in, like, the first, like, three to four weeks because I just put it on my blog and people just picked it up and downloaded it. And then, like, the indie label timed me, blah, 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 blah. Like, all these things just happened. I didn't, like, necessarily had to – I didn't have to – you know, retweet or send promo emails to people for me to jump in, into the game. But now to be hot and to be popping on top, I have to continue to put out music for a certain community or or put out music that appeals to a certain community, but it is popular music for everyone to consume. 
So the answer to your question is, <laughs> I felt like I was getting shade from the gay community early on, but now that I'm putting in work, you know, it's well deserved with the, the, the reception I'm, get, I'm getting. Uh, and, and I had to ask that question because I've never asked an out hip hop artist or an out musician before that's not mainstream. Um, because I, I still think there's a lot more support that needs to, needs to come around. Um, and I just like, wanted to hear from you guys in particular because a lot of people don't know about, I mean, you have a big name because, you know, of your platform, but a lot of the other guys who I like, Sometimes I have to blame them for not promoting themselves well enough, um, especially with all the free tools we have in social media, you know, and that's just the beginning. I mean, performing is another thing, too. But um, with that said, it's just like, I don't want to name names, but there's a lot of undiscovered um, hip hop artists that when they put out that YouTube video, it's a great song. Most of it's a great video and they still only get a hundred hits. And I'm thinking there's something wrong with this picture. Even when right. um, I start off the G list society, I'm very big on promoting LGBT artists. I mean, you're one of them. And thank you. And I'm like, and I have to say this, I would, would rather say it in a rant of my own, but I'm just making it real clear. I'm very disappointed <laughs> on how our community, I, I promote all my posts the same way, that they don't check out the LGBT musicians who mostly put out free music, and I don't put it up if it's whack. But then if I post <laughs> up something scandalous or something controversial, oh my God, we're going, we're going to check this out by the thousands. So I think us as a community, we have a long way to go, and we're going to support that mixtape which is at that piff d-a-t-p-i-f-f dot -F com it's on your website too will right yeah the will dot com it should be up if not i'm gonna have to cut somebody's head off but if not um it's on my twitter um facebook the it's uh, my facebook and all my social media for my music is gonna be will sheridan music um well let's make Instagram, sure we go there we'll first up. we want to get yeah. you traffic first so facebook make sure dot com facebook. forward slash will sheridan music all right. Well, um, I'm, yeah, definitely. And um, I just, here. <laughs> they're getting ready. So, yeah, I, I'm going to go. So, definitely. I'm just glad that we got this interview locked because yeah, I said, hey, you're one of my I favorite so artists. Scared. You did. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to cut you off on that. No. But I did. I did. I did. I so sex on the platter. Boop, boop. That's the that's the way. <laughs> hey, that's the way to do it. That's the way to pop the cherry, baby. It's got to be sex on the platter. I mean, <laughs> um, so you know, you you know what you got to do when the new videos and the singles come out. You got to tell me so I can yeah, let I got everybody you. I know. To... Um, we got to do a follow up interview too soon. Um, because I'm sure it's gonna be much success to come from. Oh, wait a minute. You're doing a documentary. Um, yes, we're doing this documentary right now. We're actually filming this all um, for um, the Giants' journey, which is gonna just it's gonna be released uh, with a bunch of other visuals to lead up into my Kickstarter. My Kickstarter will basically start at the top. Well, it might end at the top of the year, but um, I'm, I'm thinking that it's more safe to uh, it's a it's a safer, more structured. Um, way to do it that it starts at the top of the year just with new people coming in and new fans and the new music that'll be out but basically I want to commit to writing my album in February and March and not to do anything else but music um, and I'm challenging everyone who has ever had a part of my life or my career or supports me to basically just give like a dollar and if everyone gives a dollar shit. I'm gonna give more than I mean, a dollar <laughs> to my Kickstarter and basically I can just put out the best album that ever came out ever um, and we got a lot of producers on deck that are working on it and I'm really proud of everything that's going on I'm so happy you know if you asked me a year ago if I was happy with all this I'm like I would be like man I'm grinding and I'm not getting nowhere but um, all I can do is encourage other indie artists to keep going keep pushing forward and um, just be passionate about what you do exactly. and, and Going in and never ten minutes. I'm going in and in and thank you, Adi. Thank you, G List. Hey, you're more than welcome. I just wanna um thank you for being my very first interview and stay good luck 
with well not good luck much success to to it all um again people make sure you check out his soap mixtape at will sheridan music just google it you'll find all the websites and we are out dishes <laughs> get done <laughs> so bye